Thank you. Uh, it's great to be here, and thanks for the opportunity to uh, present my uh, re our recent uh, project. So yeah, I will be talking about. I will be continuing continuing talking about the uh, theme of like mobile da data collection that we had already in the previous session here. So yeah, using QField to manage traffic sign inventory. Uh, let's see. Okay. okay, so just a few words uh, first uh, about the company that I work for, Gispo, uh, as it's pronounced in Finnish, but yep. So we are like uh, about 10, year, 10, 10 years old. Uh, nowadays we have uh, about 15 employees and we are a growing company. And uh, so we basically work with uh, Fosogi software, so we do consultation projects. This is a, the, the work that I'm talking today is one example of that. And we also develop software like mapping applications and, and also like QGIS plugins, for example. Uh, and we have also uh, training and uh, courses, so we train people. We have trained over 100 organizations and more than 1,000 uh, people. And, Mostly in Finland, so we're a uh, Finland-based company. Uh, yeah, so basically just support our, and, and we also offer su support services for, for customers to any, any small hiccups that they may, may be experiencing with their uh, tools. So, okay. Yeah. So uh, today I will be talking about uh, this simple, rather simple use case of, of so, uh, Let's say you have a, you're a city and you, you have a bunch of uh, traffic signs all around. So just uh, use cases to how, do, how, how do you handle that in the inventory? So you, you want to know what you have, what kind of signs you have and where. And uh, also I will talk about, about, about the background and motivation for this soon, but also just for maintenance infra uh, purposes. So how, how you know what you have to like uh, fix and what condition is or your signs and so on. Uh, and this was so this was done pretty much one year ago already, uh, and it was done with the uh, cooperation with the Finnish uh, the traffic on the Finnish Transport Infrastructure Agency. Okay. Yeah. So the main motivation for this and the background is the piece of legislation that took, uh, took place or took into effect uh, 2020, so a couple of years ago, uh, the new road traffic tax of Finland. And it, it basically, one part of it is that it, it uh, requires that the uh, people who uh, are responsible for, for road management, so the authorities like municipalities or, or maybe some private road owners or maintainers that they uh, provide information about the road signs that they have on their, like on, on the area that they uh, are in charge of or manage. And, and also, uh, so I'll be, I will be concentrating on the, on the road signs, but also other similar infra infrastructure, such as traffic lights or road paintings. So they, they should be, uh, Provided to traffic on and uh, and uh, and it, it, the data that they they uh, provide will be stored in this Digi Road, which is the national de database for the for the uh, street and road data. Okay, so that's the basically main motivation. Like, okay, so now we we have uh, this uh, new law introduced, and and of course we have been. If you think about uh, different municipalities, for example, that they are really different in size and have a different kind of uh, resources and so on, so that it's um, also uh, <laughs> one point is that you then have to also provide some tools for them to sort of make this happen. So th th that's why this was uh, made with traffic on in cooperation. Uh, okay. Yeah, so, and, and one part of the, this is uh, uh, about the data model, don't worry, it, it's really small, and it's also mostly in Finnish, so, so you know, 
I will just say a few words about that. Uh, so there, there existed this uh, conceptual data model that uh, we also... Uh, should I use Mike? Yes. Better? Okay. So yeah, uh, so one point of this project was to test also this, basically the usability of this data model. Uh, so there existed this conceptual data model. Uh, and well, if you, so it, this is for Finnish uh, traffic science. And uh, of course, intuitively traffic signs are pretty much the same in other countries as well. Of course, there, there might be some differences, but maybe you could, you could use it this, uh, as a starting point for, for other countries as well. But yeah, so just a few words about the data model. Uh, so, the, uh, so we implemented uh, like this physical data model as a PostGIS database, and it consists of basically the, uh, uh, the main uh, table in front there, uh, or in, in center there is the uh, traffic sign. So yeah, uh, what kind of sign it is, and it has some uh, some quite many attributes, but mainly just a few sort of obligatory ones, like uh, the coordinates and, and also uh, like yeah lo location, so absolute location, the coordinates, but also like a relative uh, location. So is it on the right hand side of the road or left hand side, or in which lane and so on? And also, the, also the actually the orientation is also obligatory, if I remember correctly. Uh, and yes, and also some other attributes like structure, how is it coded, for example, and in what condition it is, and so on. So, but that's basically the data model. And then you can have the main traffic sign, and then you in Finland you can have uh, up to three of these auxiliary signs. But that's basically it. Uh, and we uh, use actually that uh, picture is from BG, BG Modeler, so we implemented that uh, as a PostGIS database. Uh, okay. But yeah, so the sort of uh, short descript description of the project. Uh, I'm not going to be going in, into much detail, for example, but uh, so we chose the Q field as a sort of a mobile collection, uh, collection collecting app for the tra traffic signs. And of course, we have already had, or also in this session, we had a uh, talk about Q field, and I, I believe there's one later as well, so I will not go into too much technical details, but of course I'm happy to provide them, you know, if afterwards. Yeah. So we did the database implementation, and then we, so, uh, as Marco uh, talked about in the previous talk about the sort of these uh, workflows and, and the impo importance of setting up the in input and data collection. Uh, so so we, we did basically that, that uh, uh, and there you can see the picture, that's basically the architecture that we used. Uh, I forgot to mention that, yeah, so we had the, and I will be talking about it furthermore, but, but this was basically a pilot, pilot uh, project to test these tools, their usability, and their data model. So, so the, of course, the architecture here is quite a <laughs> simplified one, but, uh, but uh, we used QField, QGIS, and PostGIS, basically. QField, because it uh, more or less has had, had all, the, all the tools that we needed, and of course, it, it works well with QGIS. And, and as I talked about, talked about the data model, so we used PostGIS. And then there's the another part, which is the Digi Road and the, and the API part. That was basically, uh, well, we discussed that somewhat and considered different alternatives, but I'm not going to talk about them here. But currently, there are a few different ways to like, uh, get your data to Digi Road. But anyway. Uh, but yeah, so uh, and I, I should mention that. Uh, that as I said, this was done like uh, one year ago, so uh, that this was before the Kipil Cloud was actually uh, released, so we can, kind of wanted to use that, and we tested it a bit in the end, but, but most of this was done in the, in the ordinary Q field app, and, and, and also with the 
So we, we used this uh, simplified sort of direct database, co database connection, which is of course not so <laughs> good with the like production, but also with the uh, we tested the offline workflows. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So another part was this that that uh, we wanted to test it with the with the real people that are maintaining these. Uh, uh, road information. So we had uh, basically four different municipalities around Finland, and they were also like uh, different sizes. So there was Tampere, which is, I guess, the third largest uh, city in Finland, uh, and uh, Ylöjärvi, which is actually quite nearby Tampere, and then we had Kovolan, which is kind of a middle, middle sized town, and then Nurmes, which is, uh, I guess, small town, I could say, would say at least in. in, in uh, Finland scale. Uh, so we we piloted with them, and uh, uh, so we basically uh, had a couple of sessions with them, like one big, one day workshop, a bigger event where they could uh, take these tools and we could lear learn how to use them. We had, we had like previously uh, done all the all the uh, input and workflow. Uh, design and uh, so yeah yeah so there were quite varied people who, uh, with different backgrounds so that was also a good thing that uh, you know to get the feedback back that uh, how this is actually working and the data model and the tools and of course yeah different sizes so they had uh, some had already like Tampere had already digitized I, I think something like few few thousand uh, traffic signs at the at the time, and then some started from scratch. It was interesting. Um, okay, and this is just a sort of uh, uh, one picture about the about the how it actually looked. So there's on the left there's the Kyugis project that forms the basics of the or the, or the like yeah. So you, you uh, designed it in the in the Kyugis project file all the input forms and so on, yeah, and all these sort of, yeah, we used quite a lot like default values and restrictions and so, so on. We try to think, think what would be the easiest way to actually get this, all this data in Q field. So, and, and then on the right hand side, you can see the same in, in Q field. Uh, so we, we used some, for example, tabs for different, uh, different kinds of data and, uh, and all the important ones were on the top and so on. Uh, but, uh, and yeah, then we used like, uh, there's also some visualization you can see on the, on the map canvas there, but that was maybe some additional, but, but yeah, it's also nice to see how, how it looks. Uh, so yeah, just uh, already to the results, I might discuss a bit further. So there's a uh, GitHub repo where you can find all this, uh, all this uh, material. So the QGIS project, for example, so that you could, uh, uh, you could uh, start collecting the traffic signs. Well, at least if you're in Finland. So, that, so basically, uh, also the uh, database SQL scripts. So you can set up your own database, or, or then you can take the actually the existing project files of, of QField or QGIS, and if you have a QField Cloud uh, instance running, because now it's, of course, released, you could start using that as well. It's really simple. But, but yeah, the sort of restrictions are that, you know, the data model is finished and so on, and also, therefore, a lot of the material is in, in Finnish as well, like the, all the I mean, the project file, you, you, you will find the attributes in, in Finnish and so on. Um, and yeah, so it's basically in offline mode. So, so you would have to set up your own database or, or QField Cloud. But that could be also a starting point. Uh, as I said, the, the data model could be quite similar. Uh, let's see. So some words about what did we learn uh, about you know the tools and the data model. 
so as I said, the people uh, gave us, we got some good feedback on, on the workshops and so on. So it, it, it seems that even though some, some were quite, uh, you know, not uh, GIS people, they could still quite easily get this working. Uh, and, and like, yeah, so in one day you basically uh, could, could collect, co start collecting the traffic signs. Uh, but, but yeah, if you have a like bigger uh, city and you have lots of data, then of course probably some, this is not the way to start. So you might want to have some automation like uh, uh, photographing all your traffic signs and so on. But, uh, but, but even then you could find this quite useful when you update the data, for example, when you're fixing some traffic signs or like doing ma maintenance. But, but for maybe like a smaller municipalities, this could be, you know, good tool. And, and on the project, we also, so we got the feedback. So then we could, so mo most of the time the app worked quite well, but then there were already some uh, uh, usability improvements, some feedback back with feedback that we got. So, you know, the queue field might crash a couple of times because uh, there's some issues. I, I think like uh, also worth mentioning is that there are ha has a lot, lot been uh, going on in queue field after this. So many, many of the features have actually e been extended and, and, and are better now. But, but for example, in Finland, we had something like, uh, I don't know, two to three, 300 different signs. So, how do you, for example, uh, design it so that, that <laughs> you will, because we, we used uh, this sort of uh, drop box, uh, uh, drop down widget, so where you could have, you had to uh, choose the traffic sign, so how do you actually design that so that, you know, you will get the ones that you need first and not, you know, some random, for example, there's a traffic sign for, for warning of reindeers, so which is not really used in most of Finland, but <laughs> still popped up everywhere, so stuff like that. But also then there were some uh, uh, new uh, tools. So for example, the, we did with, uh, uh, we funded the implementation of the Finnish uh, address uh, geocoding in, in Qfield. So if you're inside Finland, you can use this uh, address search and it was already in, in this Qfield 1.9 uh, named Taivaskero that uh, it was implemented. And, uh, and also, the, of course, the, some of the app was already in Finnish, but we basically uh, finished it with the, uh, with the translation. So yeah, let's see if I... Uh, okay. So that was basically... Uh, basically basically all the sort of le uh, lessons that we learned on that. But if you have any questions, I, I will be happy to answer those.